Today we're going to talk about trigonometric translations of the sine and cosine curves. Um, just as a reminder, uh, you'll see at the top here we are dealing with two equations, y equals a, the sine of bx, b times x minus c plus d, and y equals b times the cosine of b times x minus c plus d. And as a reminder, we uh, should know that the a is equal to the amplitude, B is the number of cycles in 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. C is the amount of shift horizontally, and D is the shift vertically. In problems like this, what you want to do is the first thing you want to do is find the midline. Um, and if you remember the midline, the equation for the midline, or the formula, is equal to the max plus the min divided by 2. It's really the average. And the maximum point here you'll notice is at 5. The minimum point is 1. So 5 plus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2 or 3. And that tells us that the equation of the midline is y equal 3. And the value of d is this value. So this is, I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, 3, which is the midline, and that gives us the value of D. And now we have D. And we can put it over here that it is 3. And let's sketch in the midline. It's always a lot easier to see if we sketch it in. So let's do that. Let's put a dotted line across. And the next step would be to find the amplitude. And there's two ways of finding that. You certainly could just look at how many uh, uh, units it goes above the midline and below the midline. And you should be able to see there's a distance of 2 above the midline to the maximum point and a distance of 2 to the minimum point. That should tell you the amplitude is 2. However, there is a formula. And the amplitude is simply the max minus the min over 2. In our case, it was 5 minus 1 over 2, which is 4 over 2, or 2. And that will give us the value of A. So now we have the value of A, which is 2. And let's put that up here. The next step is to find B, which is the number of cycles in 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. Um, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You certainly could start here at the origin, and one full cycle would simply come up and come back down to, to negative 1, because that's, uh, that's where we started. So that's one full cycle, and then repeats itself again. And we could outline that in green to show you a second cycle. And there, there you go, and that ends at 360. So there are two cycles in 360. Um, if you couldn't see the whole graph, you could certainly see that uh, that half a cycle goes in 180, if you wanted to look at it uh, that, uh, sorry, uh, half a cycle goes in 90 degrees. So there are two full so there, so there are two full cycles in 360 degrees, and so that tells us the value of B. So uh, B is equal to uh, 2. So let's say 2 full cycles in 360 degrees. And therefore, that gives us our value for B. And let's put that up here. So this is equal to 2. So we've gotten our A, we've got our B, we've got our D, and now we look for our C, which is the shift uh, horizontally. And to do that, we consider this to be either a sine curve or a cosine curve. Let's look at this first as a sine curve. And we'll look at it in two different ways. So here's our sine curve on this side. And if we look at it as a sine curve, you should be able to see sign. You know that a sine always starts off at the uh, midline and goes up. It's increasing. So if you were to look at this graph here, it starts off at the midline right over there 
and then starts increasing from there and, of course, continues on. And that's at 45 degrees. So if it's a sine curve, it has certainly been shifted 45 degrees to the right. And we could write that. It's been shifted 45 degrees to the right. And we have learned in the past that if that's the case, then uh, the value of uh, C is actually negative 45. So C is equal to negative 45. I'm sorry, it's equal to 45. Okay, so now we know that C is equal to 45. And since C is equal to 45, which means it's shifted to the right 45 degrees, we now have our last value for C. So let's put that here. C is equal to 45 degrees. Pick a little degree sign. And now we have our equation for the sine curve. And the answer will be y equals a, which we now know is 2, times the sine of b, which we know is also 2 in this case, times x minus 45 degrees. And uh, then plus d, which is our 3. And this turns out to be our equation right here. Y equals 2, the sine of 2 times x minus 45 degrees plus 3, where this 2 here was our A. This 2 here was our B. This 45 degrees was our C. And this 3 was our D. Now, as I said before, this doesn't have to be considered to be a sine curve. It could be a cosine curve, and that affects the value of C. So if we think of this as a cosine curve, we know that a cosine always starts at a maximum point at the origin and moves down. So if we were to simply uh, look at it over here, and we s look at the maximum point at 90, and it, then it would go down and come up and so on and so forth, that would be a cosine curve. And notice that is been shifted over 90 degrees. So the maximum point starts at 90. So if we want to consider this to be a cosine curve, we, everything would be the same except that if it's a cosine, we'll put that over here, the shift would be 90 degrees. So shift 90 degrees to the right, which means C is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, that's if it's a cosine. We should write that up above here. So 45 degrees for a sine, but 90 degrees for the cosine. So let's write our equation. Once again, it's going to be y equals still 2. Oops, I started writing sine, but it's cosine, so let's fix that up. To the cosine, parentheses, b is still 2 times x minus, but in this case, x minus 90 degrees plus d, which is still 3. And that is our answer if we want to consider this to be a cosine. And there's more than two answers. You certainly can see if we stick with cosine that there is also another peak at 270 degrees. So we could have said x minus 270 degrees for the cosine, and you'd have y equal to the cosine of 2 times x minus 270 plus 3. And similarly with sine, we could have done similar things. Um, but here's our answers, our two answers, the simplest answers we can get. Um, but remember, there's an infinite number of possible answers for the sine and cosine curves, uh, equations for this curve. Thank you, and uh, hope to see you again for part two. And now it's your turn. Find a sine and a cosine equation for the graph below. So pause this, check it out, and good luck, and see you again next time.